Hey, you guys. Welcome back to this episode of Dairy's Dish. I have a fabulous guest today. I have Chef Chris now on, who I've actually met at the World Food Championships. Welcome to the show, Chris. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you doing? I bet I'm uh, hotter than you are. I mean, not in that sense, but uh, I'm in Texas, and it's about 101 in the shade. How's it up Oh, my gosh. Today? It's horrible. Horrible. Oh, yeah. It's a lovely day up here. I'm up in uh, beautiful Port Townsend, Washington, up on the coast. Beautiful, beautiful. I had been up to Oregon one time when I was very young back in the day when I lived in California. Beautiful area up there. So anyway, you guys, Chris is actually the owner-operator chef of the Northwest Root Cellar Society. Now I want you to give us a little brief overview about what you got going on up there, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. So... My company, Northwest Root Cellars, our flagship project, and what I go under as, as my company name is the Root Cellar Society. And so me and my wife came up with this concept several years ago, and the Root Cellar Society's name was founded in this idea of coming back to traditions and coming back to the earth. So a root cellar being this idea of like the traditional pantry and uh, being – being sustainably attached to the earth by using the earth to keep your food alive. And so the kind of the, the ideas of what a root cellar represents in history and in the culture of cuisine, we wanted to bring people back to a place of nostalgia, a place of happiness, uh, something that, that connects with history and, you know, in, and is ubiquitous throughout society and culture. So it's a lot of, um, a lot of things around tying in family traditions, uh, personal stories and accounts, and the actual traditions and stories that make cuisine relevant to us as people, that, that, that little essence of what makes food more than just sustenance. Right. Now, we always call it uh, on Cutters Dish Radio the great, the great equalizer uh, because yeah. that's what food is. You know, everybody has to eat. And I think it's really cool, the whole concept that you're doing. It's, it's like a modify. It's like sort of like the farm-to-table movement. Now, unfortunately, a lot of people don't have, you know, access to farm-to-table. Like, we have a garden out here in the middle of Texas, but guess what? It burnt up. And I mean burnt. <laughs> burnt. <Yeah. laughs> and then the deer ate the rest of whatever wasn't burnt up. So we had a really, really – um but, you know, root, my uncle has a root cellar here, so, you know, root cellars are where you keep your things that you're holding over for the next season. And uh, people need to learn how to do that just in case, you know, you know what they say. <laughs> Whenever it hits yeah. the fan, you know, so. Yeah. But, yeah, I love that. I love that concept. And and you're just bringing the family back together. And I think spending time in the kitchen with your family and your children are really important now. If I remember correctly, you had, when I first met you in 2016, was it the World yes. Food Championships? I believe it was 20, no, wait, yeah, 2016. 2016. Actually. That's right. And did you just get married and have a baby or something? I can't remember exactly. I had just gotten married the week before the food championship. Right. Me and my lovely wife, Elizabeth, got married on Halloween of 2016. And I got the invitation to the food championship the week before the wedding. So I canceled our honeymoon and headed straight to Alabama. And she's that such a sport. Honeymoon. <laughs> That's awesome. I remember you guys. Y'all were so cute. And you were in the world chef competition, I believe, that year they had that competition. Yes, ma'am, I was. Yeah. I was invitational to the international division, and I finished overall second place in the overall world chef challenge. Yes, your dish was fabulous. And I know that you are mainly focusing right now on be- doing food sport competition, which is really, really cool. So you're you're not doing – the typical catering gigs like uh, caterers do. I know you're working on that. And so what, what category are you coming back in this um, November? I'm going to come back for the Professional Chef Challenge again. I believe it's not going under – it's still World Chef it's listed as or not, but it's essentially the chef's division of, right. the, of the World Food Championship. And so that's my goal is to come back. I finished third place last year, I believe, out of almost 40 competitors in the division. So that was right. really exciting you know, yes. to return and come back to a a, a, a a division that was twice as big as I had competed in the year before and still finish near the top was quite an honor. It's an exciting new category. Another shot. Yeah, it, it, it opens up the possibilities for all kinds of different chefs and recipes and things like that. I just love, love, love it. Anyway, so speaking of recipes, 
we're supposed to be talking about food, which we're going to do now. But real quick before we get into your recipe, where can people find out information about the Northwest Root Cellar Society and where they can find more of you and your beautiful food photos, by the way? Do you take those? I do all my own photography. Is, they're beautiful. Do you use your phone or do you have a regular camera? What do you do? I totally use a phone. I know. I totally use my phone for everything, too. Yeah. Messed around with a really nice cannon over the time, but uh, it's kind of hard to pull a cannon out of your pocket when you're running that fast. <laughs> and, you know, they're amazing cameras now. So, yes, I want to tell you, you, your your photos are they look, they're just delicious looking, so to speak. But, yeah, great quality. So go ahead. And whatever question it was I asked you, see, I got to talking too much. Recipes, I think, is what we're talking about. Yes. We're oh. Talk recipes now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are, we gonna, what are you cooking? Well, you asked about sharing a recipe with you, and I have a lot of different recipes I've done over the years, and one of them I adapted recently for another competition. I've been doing some of the chef's roll photo challenges, chef's roll. Mm -hmm. and the last one that was this month was the Make It Possible Challenge, and it was a challenge to 100 chefs in North America, I believe, all North American chefs, 100 chefs. God delivered the impossible meat from impossible laboratories. They're, they're vegan. Oh, I've heard about meat. this. Yes, I've heard about yes. that. Yes. Have you not tried it yet? Oh, I haven't tried it yet. No, I haven't. I definitely recommend to give it a try. It's, it's, it's a unique experience. Um, I, I thought it does make a good burger. It, um, it definitely has its, its own behavior. Um, Correct. It was, quite a, it was quite an honor to be asked to be a part of this. One of the things that I thought of, is we were all able to take that impossible the the vegetarian beef that's completely vegan and one of the unique things about it is it uses um what they refer to as heme which is i believe a fermented process to get a soy based heme is short for hemoglobin and so it's what makes blood red in the, right. in the human body and in animals so mm -hmm. it's a vegetarian process that replicates hemoglobin, and it creates a flavor profile that's similar to meat, and it also causes the vegan meat to bleed, so you can cook a mid-rare meat. That's crazy. We have Matt Hensler on occasionally to do uh, Hungry Hensler food trends. We're actually going to have him on here in a couple of weeks, and I, I believe he talked a little bit about impossible meat a few months back. It sounds really interesting. I'll have to look that up. Now, I think what I was going to ask you, Chris, was where can people find you on social media so that they can follow you? Oh, yeah. Okay, so if you want to follow me on my Instagram handle, that is at Chef Chris Now, and my name is N-A-U. And um, you can also find me at at Chef Now, W-F-C, on Facebook. At Chef Now WFC, that's my uh, Chef Chris Now of Root Cellar Society public page. And um, if they want to just find Chris Now on Facebook, it's really easy to find me and follow my personal page. I do a lot of sharing through there to people internationally, nationwide, and to my locals especially. Um, awesome. So you can find me on mostly on Facebook. I don't really do Twitter or any other accounts like that, but my Instagram handle you can also find any of my work. I always hashtag it, hashtag Chef Now. Okay. And it's you. And so that's how I like to share my work online. Um, if you see me um, competitive cooking or in, in my kitchen anywhere or traveling, my chef coats all carry on my name insignia, hashtag Chef Now. It's part of this philosophy. Hey, that's that pretty, I like that. <laughs> that's a great yeah, idea, actually. Be, you know, in the modern age, when you take a picture of somebody in a chef coat and that tiny, <laughs> that tiny little name that most people have on their chef coat doesn't really carry your name to a broader perspective. So for the last several years, I've had hashtag chef now as my name on my chef coat because I feel it's an easier way for guests to be able to share my yeah. experience that they've that's, had. That's yeah, that's, that's, that's interesting. I'm going to have to pass that idea along. I think it's fabulous. Now, you guys, if you want to come on the show and share a recipe with me, email me at trythisdishradio at gmail. Today, are we going to do an impossible meat recipe? 
Yeah, well, actually, instead of telling you the impossible meat recipe, what I'm going to do is share one of my long-term recipes that I've used in other people's restaurants. And essentially, um, it's it's a really cool herb oil, and it's like a basically you can use it as a marinade, as a grilling oil, as a finishing oil. Um, and I call it my I call it gypsy juice. So this is a recipe that I invented a couple years ago that I definitely made famous last year at the Boat Shed Restaurant. I brought it to their menu, and they're still using it to this day. Um, and it's really just a simple, straightforward, infused herb oil. And I adapted that recipe and kind of put a little couple twists on it to make what I called my gypsy, my gypsy duner kebab. So mm. I made essentially like a duner um Classic kind of Euro style pita bread, right? And serve that with uh, an impossible meat kebab that I infuse with a version of my gypsy juice. And in this version that I did for the dish for the competition, I really like to use wild flowers and wild foraging. So that was kind of where I took my own twist on it. But I'm going to give everyone a recipe that they can do at home, and it's super simple with ingredients that everyone's quickly familiar with. And then you can have some of my flavors on your table. All right, you guys, grab your pens and paper and pencil or your quills or whatever. <laughs> or open yeah, up your notepad, you guys. Great. Those quills. <laughs> and get ready to get a fabulous recipe from Chris. And we'll actually give a link at the end so you all can go and, and get more details about it, Chris. Yeah. Talk yeah, you know, um, I, I I did some ill planning. This weekend was my birthday, so I haven't actually published this anywhere yet. Ooh, but well, y'all stay tuned. There you everyone's go. getting the first taste of it right here on your show, and then uh-huh. I will definitely be publishing it somewhere for everyone to find. Awesome. All right, what are we going to start with? Let's start with the ingredients, of course. Let's go. Yes, absolutely. So this is an original Chef Now recipe for gypsy juice, and it starts with one quart of oil. Uh, typically, most people might use a standard vegetable or canola. I recommend using olive oil for this recipe, but, you know, it's, it's, it's for your own personal choice if you want to use some type of oil that best matches your diet. Okay. So for one quart of oil, I will then take one whole bunch of parsley, one whole bunch of green onions, one bunch of cilantro, and somewhere between six to eight sprigs of rosemary, I would say approximately a cup, which, you know, when you have a a sprig or a bunch of parsley and green onions, those are about approximately a cup. So you've got those four ingredients, a cup approximate, and then you're going to want a quarter cup of garlic, chopped or minced fresh garlic, Um, about, uh, about two tablespoons of salt, and then a teaspoon or a healthy pinch of red pepper flake. Nice. And, and essentially take all of these ingredients, add them to your oil in a heavy-duty heavy, heavy duty blender, high-speed blender, and blend it up. Any pepper in there? Regular pepper? Nope. I don't use any pepper. You could add some if you wanted to, but the original recipe for this, I use no black pepper, one of my reasonings behind not using black pepper is because I people have different opinions on this, but black pepper, before you put something onto the grill, black pepper burns on the grill and creates what I find to be an undesirable flavor profile. So I like to use black pepper on things after it's been grilled. Oh, I gotcha. Well, that makes sense. Did you guys hear that? That was a great tip right there. Uh, you know. Yeah. You know, obviously, lots of people, you know, you might do pepper encrusted and then grill something, and then, you know, if you're wanting to have burnt black pepper flavors, but for this particular recipe, I use just red pepper flakes and salt. How long does it last? In the, in the uh, that's the cool thing about this recipe and why I, I thought it'd be fun to share it, is that this is like a longevity recipe, and it just gets better pretty much over time. So once you make this, I recommend making it the day before. Okay. Um, because, you know, it's going to really infuse the flavor into the oil. And um, it has a shelf life, I think, upwards to a month if you want, you know, if you were storing it into the fridge. It's also, if you were going to be using it over a weekend, it's something that could easily probably stay on a counter shelf stable. I do a lot of um, 
herbal and wild craft types of infusions. And so taking oil and adding, uh, adding herbal and plant materials like that and leaving them shelf stable on the shelf is relatively safe, but it's definitely recommended that you refrigerate anything like that. And, and if you the, refrigerate it, it could last for weeks, even months. Well, it looks like it'd be a great just basic, you know, dressing for salad, obviously. Uh, like a basic Exactly. Salad, but not, it doesn't have any um, uh, hello vinegar in there. So if you wanted to, I guess, if you wanted to make it more like a dressing, would you be – would you put, like, a vinegar in with it, or what do you think? I totally – yeah, and, and you know, a lot of my recipes are designed in this way. I'm, I, 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 I design things with versatility. Um, yeah. So, exactly, this, this could be used as a marinade. I typically would finish this with lemon. So, this, this recipe was, um, was birthed out of working in a lot of Northwest chowder houses. I have worked in ex- almost exclusively chowder houses, seafood broilers, and Northwest breweries. There so, you go. Everything is about salmon is king. Right. And <laughs> is, halibut is a highly coveted thing by local fishermen. And so if you're cooking halibut or salmon, whether it be a Pacific or Atlantic salmon, this is a really simple grilling oil that you can make in advance. You can leave it on the shelf, and and it'll last. And when you incorporate this with some fresh squeezed lemon, I feel that it it it, it is – it is the desired flavor profile that most people are are looking for when they go to a seafood restaurant. And so I realize this recipe, it's simple. And obviously this one, I've given you just four basic herbs, parsley, green, onions, cilantro, and awesome. rosemary. This, this is leaving a room for anybody to be like, oh, maybe I could throw oregano in there, or maybe I could throw this. Uh, you could definitely – change change the or incorporate more green ingredients this recipe originally came from another chef i worked from inspired it and he would make a very similar thing out of whatever we had and so when i designed this recipe i designed it i designed it for several other restaurants years ago and gave it to other chefs to replace their grill oil recipe where guys were just using basically salt, pepper, and butter. Pepper and oil. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so this really delivers on that um, that zesty, herby, green flavor that makes your seafood really feel fresh. I'm going to make some of that now. And the parsley, do you, do you think uh, flat leaf or curly is best? I would say that I like curly for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I think that it has more of a gusto in the flavor sometimes, but, you know, it, it really depends. I think that um, it, it's really a recipe based on what, you're, what you have, and that's why right. I named it Gypsy Juice. What so, you have on hand. Based I on what you have that. on hand. <laughs> Absolutely. If anything green that you have on hand can, can be added to this oil. And so this is a real good baseline recipe. Obviously, it's really simple. I could, I could have brought a – a super complex recipe. I don't like that. I want to bring your your listeners something that they can make, and then they can start to make their own. And make, exactly. Make their, you know, recipe their own. Adapt it. You know, be like able to take a recipe like this and be like, oh yeah, I I learned it from Chef now, but now it's mine. I want I want uh, recipes to be given to people that way they can well, take their ownership. And I got to say, I appreciate that, Chef, because. Some chefs might not feel that way. Like they, you know, and I'm kind of the same way. I don't really cook with a cookbook unless it's a baked product where, I, you know, baking is chemistry. But, Absolutely. you know, I just, I cook, I, I was going to call my my blog cleanoutherefrigerator.com because I go in there and I could just make something out of nothing. Like people would go, how the hell did you do that? And I go, hey, I got skill. You know, it's just like, it is a skill. But, you know, people yeah. And I'm really all about not having a lot of food waste, and I really want to help feed hungry children. That is my ultimate mission. I don't know how I'm going to get there yet, but that is my, one of my missions on this planet. So it's all about that, you know, cooking what you got, don't waste things, and uh, that's another whole show right there. But I just love this recipe. I'm going to try it. And you guys can cut it in half. Obviously, if you don't want to make a quart of it at one time, you would just half the ingredients, right, Chris? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean – the reason it's it's uh, it's basically a quart is because that's how much I feel is a reasonable amount of oil to thin out that much that much greenery. 
Um, but yeah, if you had less, you could use less. Yeah. So, and you can store it in your refrigerator, your guys, and it looks, and you can use your choice of oil. Olive oil, of course, is the healthiest. And if you're going to use another oil, make sure you don't use one that is pasteurized or heated up or, you know, yeah. use a, use a cold pressed oil. Yeah. The oil choice, I would say definitely, um, you know, olive oil is good or a high temp oil. It's all based on your budget, I think, with oils, you know. And what you're doing with it, too, like if you're going to use it mainly for a marinade or something like that. So, exactly, you know, your budget yeah. and then your application because, yeah, you're not going to take, like, a, an expensive avocado oil and just be throwing it all over the oh, grill. Really, really. It's real expensive. Anyway, Chris, thank you so much for coming on. And any last words you'd like to give our listeners about maybe just one quick um, kitchen tip? I don't know. What do you got? Sure. Um Let's think. Thank well, you, my philosophy you. lately has been bringing people back to the dinner table, and so I just want to propose to everybody who's out there listening right now to, if they don't on a, on a regular basis already, I know that a lot of people in this new uh, fast-paced world that we live in don't always have the time to sit down and eat with even their family or friends, and maybe even at a restaurant, but everyone, please go out there and find the people you love and eat with them. Absolutely. The, the, that's a great a great line to end this show on and also one of my philosophies. Thank you, Chris, so much for coming in again and, and talking to us. And check him out. Hashtag, what is it? <laughs> for chef. chef Now. And then you can, chef now. That, you can search that on Google, and you can immediately find my work. You can find out my articles uh, uh, for the Kitsap Sun as my local paper. You can find out about the Root Cellar Society. You can find out about all the different organizations that I've involved myself with over the last few years. I love partnering with nonprofits. My biggest mission is to is to bring education and philosophy throughout cooking because like you said, it's not just about the structure of a philosophy or of a recipe. It's not just about following the recipe. It's about knowing how to how to uh really empower yourself with a recipe. Yes, absolutely love that. And, Chris, I look forward to seeing you at the WFC here in a few months. So, woo, I can't wait. It's going to be an exciting yep. time. going to be a big World year. World Championship 2018. I'll be uh, November 7th at 9 a.m. I'll be at the wharf, and hopefully I'll be at that final table. Oh, you will be, and I'll see you there. I will actually be staying right there at the wharf, too, so I'm looking forward to it. And, you guys, if you want to email me a recipe, that I'll share for you, trythisdishradio at gmail.com, or, you know, hit me up on Facebook at trythisdishradio. Also, listen to trythisdishradio daily on Skynet at 9, 1, and 9. And I'll give you guys some more info on that, on how to get to Skynet. We're also on Podomatic for our past episodes. Chris, thank you so much. And you guys, thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next episode of Dairy's Daily Dish Delectable Recipes. I don't know. i got to come up with a damn name. <laughs> and we're out okay <laughs> thanks for having me have a good day all right well that's it for this week's episode of dairy's dish make sure and tune in next week for another exciting and tasty food adventure please email your recipes to me at try this dish radio at gmail.com and follow us on facebook at try this dish radio and twitter at try this dish show Thanks once again for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.